Kia ora, good morning everyone, Mitch Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Panasonic is releasing another round of new firmware update, which brings us some new features and changes. So the new firmware is 3.1 for the S5 II, 2.1 for the S52X, G92 is 2.2, and for the S9 will be 1.1. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you, show you what are the new changes and also share with you some of my test results as well. First of all, for the Lumix S9, the first changes is the improvement to the frame markers. So if you have been a Lumix camera user, you know one of the really good feature is the frame marker that was introduced quite a while ago. And I really love that feature because it allows you to see another aspect ratio on the screen that allow you to crop your photo or video after you record much easier. But one of the current limitation is that you can only have one frame marker display on the screen. But with this latest firmware update for the Lumix S9, you can now have up to three frame markers display at the same time. And each of them you can choose from a range of different aspect ratio. You can even choose the custom, which means you can define your own aspect ratio if you want. So with all these different frame markers display at the same time, it is very useful, especially if you're shooting in the open gate mode. This allows you to define your horizontal and vertical video crop position. So you can see it very clearly how the framing would be like after you crop the video. So not only you can have three different frame markers, for each of them, you can also resize and reposition each of these frame markers to anywhere you want. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want to use your frame markers. And you can resize and reposition the frame markers quite easily, either using the physical control on the camera or using the touch screen. And you can use the frame markers for either photo or video. I imagine a lot of S9 users will really love this new feature. And the second improvement for the S9 is something that I have mentioned in my S9 review, which is right now with the S9, when you are recording video, because the S9 doesn't have a built-in cooling fan and also because the body size is smaller than say the S5 II. So there is a recording limit for all the different video recording options. The maximum time depends on what is the resolution of the video that you want to record, but it is as low as 10 minutes if you want to record 6K video. So, I have mentioned and complained about it a bit in my S9 review because when I did the overheat testing, I found the camera actually can record much longer than the soft limit. So I really want Panasonic to remove or at least increase the time limit. So finally, now with this 1.1 firmware, you can disable the video record limit from the setup screen. So if you disable the record limit, the camera will record as long as possible until the camera overheat. The camera will overheat, but I just did a test before I record this video. I was recording in this room here. The room temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. So it's not very hot, but it's also not freezing cold. You can see I'm just wearing a t-shirt here. So with the S9 running the 1.1 firmware and recording in 6K open gate mode, previously there was a 10 minutes limit, which is pretty short. But when I did the test, I managed to get the camera to continuously record just over 45 minutes before it overheat. So 45 minutes is definitely much, much better than 10 minutes. So I think a lot of people, as long as you're not living in a very hot places or shooting, you know, directly under very harsh and bright hot sunlight, you should get a much longer recording time with this new firmware. But one thing you have to watch out is because now the camera will be running 
until it's really, really hot. So once the camera overheat, it would take a much longer time for the camera to cool down before you can do the recording again. Another improvement for the S9 is the autofocus subject detection. When Panasonic released the GH7, it introduced some new improvement to the subject detection and all these changes are now coming to the S9. So the changes we have is the improved car detection mode. So with the car detection mode, you can now choose the normal one or you can choose to prioritize the driver of the car. And we have the similar improvement for the motorcycle subject detection as well. You can choose to prioritize the autofocus on the helmet instead if you want. And then we have two new subject detection, which is the train and airplane. So with each of these new subject detection, you can also choose between whether you want to detect the whole subject or prioritize part of the subject. Okay, now let's talk about the new changes for the other cameras. For the S5 II and the S5 II X, the first improvement is that you now have the new Leica monochrome picture profile. This is a very nice black and white color profile that Lumix worked together with Leica to create this that was previously available on the Lumix S9 and some other camera. I understand a lot of people really want to have it available on the S5 II or the S5 II X. So now with the latest firmware, you have it available on these two cameras. And then the next update is for the S5 II, S5 II X and also the Lumix G9 II. And this is the Lumix Lab app support. When Panasonic released the S9, it also released the brand new smartphone app, which is the Lumix Lab. So this is a completely brand new app that has improved the connection speed. It also has the brand new real-time LUT workflow, which allows you to download LUT directly from the app. There are more than 100 different LUTs available. Some are designed for photos, some are designed for videos, or you can also create your LUT pretty easily from within the app, and then you can transfer those LUTs to your camera. So now this is all available for the S5 II, S5 II X, and also the G9 II. With this new firmware, the real-time LUT feature has been upgraded to exactly the same as the new version that comes with the S9. So you have all those new improvements like stacking multiple LUTs, and the camera would automatically choose the base picture profile when you apply LUT using the real-time LUT feature. The Lumix S9 has a dedicated real-time LUT button on the camera, which allows user to very quickly and easily switch between different LUTs that is installed on the camera. With this new firmware, you can now also assign the real-time LUT function onto a function button with the S5 II, S5 II X, or the G9 II. And another update for the S5 II, S5 II X, and the G9 II is that when you are using it with the Lumix Lab app, you now have the option to select 5 GHz connection. 5 GHz should allow you to transfer images much faster from your camera to your phone. But one thing you have to be careful is some countries would not allow you to use 5 GHz. For example, in Japan, you cannot use 5 GHz. So unfortunately, if you live in one of the countries that doesn't allow 5 GHz, you have to stick with the old 2.4 GHz. And with the latest firmware, the new audio adapter XLR2, which was released together with the GH7, is now also supported by the S5 II, S5 II X, and the G9 II. However, the 32-bit float audio is not supported by any of this camera. So if you want to use 32-bit flow, the only option is the GH7, it is right now. Okay, the last improvement is for the Lumix S9. When you're using the S9 with the Lumix Lab app, you can now use the app to wisely trigger the video recording or take photo. Or you can use it to do remote shooting, which means you can see the live view preview from your app 
and you can also change all the camera setting remotely from your app as well. You can even completely override all the setting controls from your app. And from the camera, you can now also select what are the images that you want to transfer from the camera to your phone. The latest firmware also includes some bug fixes and for the S5 II, S5 IIX and also the original S5, it also improved the support for the new collapsible 18 to 40 millimeter zoom lens so that when the lens is in the collapsed state, the camera will know that it is in collapsed state and it can display the proper message to tell the user to extend the lens before they can start using it. So these are the main changes that comes with the new firmware. What do you guys think about this new firmware update? Now, obviously there are some changes that I was hoping to see, but not there yet. So for example, the S5 to S5 to X doesn't see any of the autofocus improvement like the S9. I'm not too sure if it's because there are some technical limitations or it's just because Panasonic hasn't get around to do all those updates yet, but hopefully we'll be seeing more firmware update for some of these cameras in the future.